Don't you wish you could just wake up, walk over to your coffee maker, turn it on, and make a nice hot cup of coffee in the morning? That would be nice, wouldn't it? But every time you want to do that, the tank's out of water. Well, I'm going to show you how to hack that Keurig so that never happens again. I'm Home DIY Dan, and if you like making your life just a little bit more convenient, hit that subscribe button to see all the awesome projects we have coming up next. These are the materials we'll be using to get this done. The only thing you really can't get at the hardware store that I've noticed is the float valve. Everything else should be available at your local hardware store. But I left a link in the description to everything you'll need down below. So we're going to set up the lid with the float valve. Now, I did this project about two years ago, so I've already got a hole in the lid. To get this hole, all you need to do is drill a small pilot hole with like a 1 8 inch drill bit and then come back through and with a 3 quarter inch drill bit or 3 quarter inch uh, spade bit drill a hole big enough to fit the threaded connection through. Since I got the hole already drilled we're just going to take the float valve stick it in like that and we're going to take the nut tighten it up You can give it a couple turns with a wrench if you want, but hand tight should be just fine. You don't want to over tighten it and crack the plastic. Now you can do this setup with virtually any Keurig lid that's out there, as long as it's big and not one of the single serve Keurigs, but any of the normal uh, household ones, this solution will work for. So now that we've got the float valve attached, we're going to take the 90 degree connection and we're going to push that on here. Just push it on. And then you're going to take this blue clip. And you're going to pull the connection back just a little bit so that you can got that gap. And you're just going to pop that on just like that. Now, if you ever need to disconnect it, you pop the blue clip off and you push down on that white part and, that, and then pull up and that'll disconnect this. Same thing with the hose when we put that on later on. All right, let's go jump behind the fridge. All right, guys, this is the fun part. You get to pull the fridge back and crawl back here. Now, it's not going to be the same configuration for every one of you. You might have your coffee maker in a different spot. You might not have a water line running to your fridge. You might have an RO line running to your sink. So take that into account when you're doing this. It's going to vary slightly just based on your setup in your home. Make sure to turn off the water before you start messing around with any of the connections back here. Hook up the braided stainless steel cord here. Add your T-connection, threaded T-connection right here. Then add your quarter inch tubing here. Hook up your hose here. You can do your T-connection, this part and this part without having to be sitting behind the fridge and uncomfortable and awkward. You can do all that somewhere else. So then you come back here and you just have to hook up to the wall and to the fridge. Makes it a lot easier than trying to futz around with everything back here. One of the biggest concerns I saw with people online and comments about similar projects was, well, what if the tube or the float valve fail and my kitchen floods? Well, what happens if your refrigerator tube fails and your kitchen floods? It's a what if question. There's measures you can take to prevent it or to slow it down, but I wouldn't let it stop you from the convenience of this. As long as you test your connections after you put them together, once you turn on the water, then there should be no issue. Now on the tubing, there's a few things you can do. So after your T connection, I put in a shutoff switch that would be close to the Keurig. It's still kind of hidden where you can't see it, but I know if something happens, I can pull it out real quick, shut it off, and that cuts the water of the Keurig off. If you're really concerned, another thing you can do is get one of the smart water sensors. I think Samsung has some. I'll put a link to one in the description. 
or one that uh, is audible. So as it detects water, it makes a loud sound, you'll know to come check out what's going on. So that is a mitigation strategy for the possibility of water exploding and going everywhere. I'm going to take the small risk with doing something like this because of the convenience of it and it makes my life so much easier when I don't have to stress out if I'm running late and I can't have my coffee, blah, blah, blah. One more concern that I've heard online a lot. Well, isn't the water just going to sit there? Well, it fills from the top and it drains from the bottom. And as it's filling, it kind of agitates it. I haven't had any coffee or water that's tasted bad. Our water hasn't been murky. And like I said, I've been using this setup for over a year now. One other thing you can do with the tubing is you can add an inline water filter. So if you want your water, if you've just got normal city water or whatever coming off your wall, you can add a water filter in here within the system so that you've got filtered water going into your Keurig. If you don't use your coffee maker as much, you can adjust the float valve so that it doesn't fill as high. So then you get a faster water turnover, but that's entirely up to you. All right, let's get this hooked up to the Keurig and get the Keurig filled up. Okay, so I turned on the water connection behind the fridge already because I have that shut off, inline shut off valve for the quarter inch tubing. This is off. So if I were to turn this on, it's going to spray. So that works. Before you finish everything up, test the connection. Make sure you've got no leaks anywhere in your system. And then we're going to hook up this final piece. Same as before with this part. We're going to take the tube, push it in. And that little gap there, we're going to push this clip in. And there we go. So now this tube is not going anywhere. This part's not going anywhere. We're ready to put it onto the Keurig. But one last thing. On this float valve, you can adjust the float itself. It might ship differently from the factory. So just be mindful of that. It's just a Phillips head connection here. You loosen it a little bit and move this. You'll rotate that just slightly to make sure that um, it fills properly. And we'll okay, we've got the top on, we've got our float valve, we've got our tubing ran. Now it's time to turn it on, test it out. It worked. I never have to fill the water on this thing ever again. If you guys like seeing projects like this, hit that subscribe button and check out all the cool stuff we have coming up next. Let's make some coffee.